हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे कलये सुंदराकार सदैव प्रिय दर्शन अज्ञान नाशक देव सद्गु मुरलीधर मुरली मंडित करकमल मुनिजन मोहन व्यतस्त पाद वनमलाधारिण प्रेम भक्त मंडल निर्ति श्री प्रेमिक वरद आश्रिए हम श्री हर ये नम श्री हर ये नम श्री हर ये नम गोपिका जीवन स्मरण गोविंद गोविंद सद्गुनाथ महाराज की जय by the benign grace of lord shri hari our very beloved shri madhuri sakhi samet premik varada thakur ji and by the immense kripa of our sadguru maharaj his holiness haranyam shri shri murli dhara swami ji in the last session that i had with all of you the kishore bhagavatas we started with how suta pauranika gives a reply to the questions of shavanakadi rishis we saw in the first chapter shavanakadi maharishis were assembled for a uh, yaga for satya yaga in naimisharanya and they had invited suta pauranika to tell all the stories of all the puranas and itihasas and they had put six questions and uh, the answer uh, to which was shrimad bhagavatam and uh, suta pauranika was very excited is very excited to tell bhagavatam and uh, we saw the dhyana shlokas that suta pauranika remembers or does a smarana of before starting his discourse where he thinks of his guru shri shukacharya along with shri vyasacharya who is the granta karta who is the one who actually composed this shrimad bhagavatam right and he starts right away by giving the answer we already discussed the six questions we already discussed uh, the six short answers so i'm really hoping all of you remember some day we'll have a quick discussion uh, to recollect all that but uh, today we'll go further so we saw this particular shloka in the last class where the answer to the question of what should everyone do what is the greatest duty of a man to attain the highest you know the best or uh, the shreyas so the answer is he says savai pumsam paro dharma ha yato bhakti hi adokshaj he says the highest duty of any pumsa no dharma is here duty of anybody any jeeva man or woman is they should have love for bhagwan they should have bhakti for bhagwan and how should that bhakti be we said it should be ahaituki apratihata ahaituki means it has to be costless and apratihata means that will, when it is costless it will all obviously be without any kind of obstruction right that bhakti will be seamless and only when we have this kind of absolutely unconditional love for bhagwan it is the we should, we should be doing only that duty which should give us this kind of bhakti at the feet of bhagwan so that's what we discussed we discussed in detail about what is ahaituki what is apratihata and all so next level he says whatever dharma see first he said whatever dharma that you follow it should lead to love for bhagwan right love for bhagwan that is the first thing he says now he says dharma ha swanushtita pumsam vishvaksena kathasuya ha lodpadayet yadi ratim the second thing he he says about dharma. First he said, whatever dharma you do, it should lead to bhakti. Then he says, whatever dharma you do, that should lead to developing love for listening to Bhagavad Katha. Right? See, he says, if you do something, and whatever dharma you know he is not defining what we should be doing here instead he says irrespective of what you think dharma is it is dharma 
only if it leads to this end, right? See, the means is right only if the end is reached. I hope you are with me when I say this. See, how do you know what you are doing is right or wrong? If you get the result, you know, and the, while following dharma, without compromising dharma, if you follow, if you get the result, then what you have done is right, right? So he is telling us the end result of doing our duty. Here dharma is used as duty, right? So he says, how do you know what you are doing is right? Only if you attain this end. What is the first end he says? He says you should, again, you should get bhakti at the feet of Bhagavan. You should have unconditional love at the feet of Bhagavan. Then second he says, what you do is right if whatever you do is leading to love for listening to Bhagavan's katha. Vishwak senu katha su yaha na utpadiye tradiratim. If whatever you do does not lead to you developing love for listening to Bhagavad Katha, to Krishna's stories, then whatever you have done is labor lost. Shama evahi kevalam means labor lost. Labor lost, now what does it mean? It means you have exerted yourself so much for nothing. It is actually useless, right? Whatever you do will be useful only if it leads you to which uh, it leads you to love listening to Bhagavad Gita. If that does not happen, then whatever you do, that is totally fruitless. It is only useless. It is just exert, you know, mere exertion and nothing else. It is mere exertion. Shamayevahi kevalam and nothing else. So he says two, we, we, now we know two things. You know, we know we are the right path if we develop love towards Bhagavan. And if we develop love towards Bhagavan's stories, right? One is for Bhagavan, the other is for Bhagavan's stories. I'll tell you how these are connected because he's bringing it very beautifully. See, when we have a step, we usually think of going up like this, right? Now he's bringing us from top to bottom. So we understand the basic step which can lead to the highest. So he's coming in reverse. He first said, that we should develop ahituki apratihata bhaktihi. Then he said we should have a love for listening to Vishwat Sena Katha. And then he says, before we go further into this, he says we have to understand what dharma. Uh, writing in, let me write in English. Dharma, artha, kama, moksha. So, these are called Purusharthas. What does Purushartha mean? See, these are the four things that uh, is worthy of pursuing. Okay, like, uh, see, someone pursues uh, uh, some kind of career, right? But overall, for all the human beings, the most uh, these four are the broad categories which, which cover what we say as the Purusharthas, which means these are the things that are worth pursuing. One is Dharma, the other is Kama, uh, and of course we have Artha, and then Kama, and then we say Moksha. Right? Now see, usually we tell this in this order. Right? We always say, Dharma first, then we say Artha, Kama, Moksha. So what people generally think, this is what people have, this is what people assume. They think if I follow Dharma, I will become wealthy. What is Artha? Artha is money, right? Money and uh, things related to that, possessions, etc. Right? Dharma is the righteous path, the righteous duty. Right? Righteousness. The way I put it simply. We generally think, if I follow dharma, I will become rich or I will get whatever I want. And uh, once I have this artha, I will use this artha to fulfill my desires. Kama is desires. Right? Now what happens to moksha here? 
nobody knows nobody knows what is the link between karma or uh, you know where moksha comes in anywhere anywhere in this picture this is what people generally assume right they think this is how it should be dharma followed dharma should lead to artha artha should lead to karma but bhagavatam shows us very beautifully that is not the case right he says dharmasya yapavargyasya narto arthaya upakalpate he says that the end of dharma is not artha which means generally people see if if i if your mother asks you you know if your mother tells you to always be honest to speak only the truth right and uh, we think that speaking the truth should be rewarded in some way that is the misconception because speaking the truth should be the normal state right let me explain this in a very simple way for you to understand uh, generally people you know the, the, even the grown ups they have this complaint they think uh, they they follow all the rules etc say they are working in an office and they are very sincere in their work they are very hard working they are very truthful they are very honest they are very humble etc etc but say they don't get promoted and someone you know their colleague who in their eyes is not that trustworthy not very truthful not very hard working etc but he gets promoted so what does this person think he thinks what is the use of me uh, you know being so honest or hard working i was righteous i followed dharma but i did not get promotion that follow that fellow did not even follow dharma but he got promotion like you know we say i i spoke the truth but i don't get any uh, reward for it but there is someone who is not speaking the truth but that fellow seems to get everything so why should i follow dharma so this is a question that even a child has and even the grown ups have right we have to understand that is why bhagavatam tells us here clearly the end of dharma no scripture says that the end of dharma is artha it doesn't say if you follow dharma if you are very righteous you will become rich it's not like that at all why because being righteous should be our nature as human beings what is the link between dharma artha kama and moksha that is what this loka tells us very clearly so let's get there right so there are four things dharma artha kama and moksha what we should remember is this is not linear like you no know, it doesn't go in this order it is kind of cyclic everything has a role in every way dharma let us define as the righteous living right artha is let's say prosperity easier to understand kama is desire and moksha is liberation right now this shloka tells us how these are related right so he says dharmasya apavargasya न न अर्थाय अर्थो अर्थाय उपकल्पते अर्थस्य धर्मैकांतस्य कामो लाभाय धर्मैकांतस्य कामो dharmasya yapavargasya the end of dharma is actually moksha right why do why, why why should we follow dharma because it will ultimately lead us to moksha right and what is what is the role of artha here we have to gain prosperity we have to earn money or earn possessions only by following dharma so why accumulating artha while accumulating wealth we should accumulate it in a dharmic way okay we should follow dharma when we accumulate wealth and we should use that wealth to do dharma to do the right things to do dana to do charity etc so this is again cyclic you should use dharma to gain artha in the sense that 
dharma whose result is not artha you should follow dharma and uh, we should only do things that are in line with dharma and gain artha out of it and use that artha again for to do dharma right like charity etc and what is the role of desire bhagwan himself has given us few basic desires like hunger and thirst these are desires that everyone who is born will naturally have the other desires could be different but these two basic desires are same for everyone <coughs> right a uh, hunger and thirst bhagwan has given that so that we can maintain our body right only if we have this body can we follow dharma can we accumulate wealth and by doing this we can go and attain moksha right so that is the role of kama to keep our body and soul together that is the role of kama and when all these three things are done in a perfect fashion it leads us to moksha right so the end of dharma is only moksha so that is how this uh, these four work you know they are uh, very interrelated and one goes along with the other that is what is given very beautifully in this so when even someone tells us what is the use of following dharma we have to remember that following dharma itself is grand in mahabharata there is a very beautiful incident you know how the pandavas along with draupadi you know the pancha pandavas and draupadi they had to leave the kingdom and go to the forest in vanavasa for 13 years and uh, there was a moment you know they had lot of suffering even in vanavasa duryodhana did not leave live, you know let them leave in uh, live in peace even in the forest they had lot of troubles so uh, there was a point when draupadi was very frustrated so when she was very frustrated she was asked yudhishthira our dharma putra she said you know you keep following dharma to the letter what is the use of following dharma because we are suffering so much there seems to be no use for it and uh, dharma putra was looking at himalayas at that time it's, they were uh, near himalayas and uh, he looked at the himalayas and he looked at draupadi and he said he showed her those himalayas and he said just look at that himalayas how grand it is how magnificent it is you know just looking at the himalayas gives us such peace and such joy is it not but it is not doing anything it is just there the himalayas is just there is it not and just looking at it is giving giving us that kind of joy dharma he says is like that it is magnificent in itself right our guru guru maharaj would beautifully use this word he would say if you follow dharma what you get is inner excellence no nothing can match this that is what we gain by following dharma and that sequence is beautifully given in shrimad bhagavatam kayena vacha manasendriye eva budhyatmana va prakrte subhava karomi etyat sakalam parasmai shriman narayanaye ti samarpayami hare ram hare ram 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 hare 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 krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare 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 krishna hare krishna 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 hare hare gopika jeevan smaranam govinda govinda sadguru nath maharaj ki jai